Good morning and welcome back to Kirkstone. I did promise you uh, something special this weekend so I've uh, kind of been saving this really but it arrived just on time. I have a, uh, a large box which is obscuring probably your field of view but the exciting thing about this box is that it has a sticker on it. And this sticker is from my friend Benjamin, who you may not know by the name Benjamin, but if you've watched any of these videos with any degree of alacrity or zeal, you will notice that that is the, uh, the real name of the guy that uh, trades as Knobs and Blobs 2 on eBay UK. And uh, this is a, a slightly larger box, so I'm just taking this opportunity to introduce you to the first of Kirkstone's Mega Halls, because this is much bigger than a hall. And the quality of the plants we've seen last time round have been absolutely unexcelled. But I'm not going to repeat any of that because it's all on the early videos. Let's just take a look at what uh, Benjamin sent. And this is literally the five-year-old child opening the Christmas presents moment. Because I have full faith I can't be disappointed. I can't be. So, let's just make a tiny bit of space. Move this seed tray out of the way for now. And move this large box. And see what we have. Well, already the excitement is, uh, is justified. Because there's a flower stalk sticking up from somewhere. I don't really know where to start on this uh, on this uh, on this delivery, so I'll just start at the top and uh, and see what's going on. Now I'll try not to make the video too long because what you want to see is what's actually come. So I'll uh, I'll digress from my normal um, botanical interludes whilst talking, and I'll just show you that the first thing we have is this lovely. Hawarthia, a Hawarthiopsis under the, the new nomenclature, Hawarthiopsis fasciata. Lovely, lovely plant. Now, I've ordered this because you'll say, hang on, he's got Hawarthiopsis fasciata. He's talked about that before. I've ordered this Hawarthia fasciata for a friend. And I will give him the one he's ordered. I won't look at the three I've got and give him the worst one because that would be churlish. What else have we got? Oh, oh, there's a bit of weight there. Definitely a bit of weight. And in this particular little mummified package, in this pseudo-sarcophagus of tissue, we have an as yet unidentified Gymnocalicium. Well, 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 well. I did promise before, this looks like Ocotera Aeneas, I did promise before that we'd be doing an overview of the genus the Gymnocalicium very soon. But before we do, just feast your eyes on that. Look at that apple-sized specimen quality, well-rooted, beautifully, beautifully symmetrical Gymnocalicium. I think altogether now we must have about 30 gymnos in the collection and it's certainly a, a speciality field for me but the fact of the matter is they do often look very similar and there might only be uh, small details of spination or, um, or flowers particularly which will allow, allow you to differentiate between them. So I'll have to look that one up and tell you what it is on a supplementary video. Now I have complained to myself about being repetitive and there are five or six dealers on eBay UK uh, as well as the specialist nurseries that I deal with on a very very regular basis but there's very few things rank with the excitement the delivery from Benjamin Bishop from uh, Knobs and Blobs actually comes with it because it's just it's a feast for the senses for the plant collector and uh, avid cactus and succulent grower and this is a, a Hawarthia a retusa um, hybrid 
probably Retusa uh, hybridized with Mirabilis from the looks of things because it's a little bit smaller growing in terms of its um, shape and function than another Retusa clump I've got but once again you know for four or five pounds You've got a clump there which is about four inches by three and a half inches. Absolutely brilliant little collection. It's been grown in a in the flat pan, so the roots are all on the underneath. But what an absolutely fabulous little uh, assembly to put on the top of a pot. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant plant. We're only scratching the surface of our first mega haul. So what else has Benjamin sent us? Benjamin has also sent, again lovingly wrapped and very very well uh, protectively packaged, a wonderful little gasteria. Okay, look at that. And again, this looks like a Gasteria um, bicolor Lilliputana, or a form or a hybrid thereof, being grown in a very, very um, open mix, mixed with perlite. I'm sure you can see that. But there must be uh, 40, 50 heads there, individual little plants growing up from that choice miniature. An absolute little gem. Look at that. Absolutely brilliant. All those babies clustering around the side there. Now just imagine that in a shortish pot, uh, like a half pot like this one, which just happens to be here, right in the middle of there, surrounded by a nice, uh, attractive, gritty topping to the pot. What an absolute little gem that is. Gorgeous, gorgeous plant from Benjamin Trading as Knobs and Blobs 2 on eBay UK. <coughs> And again, I can just uh, I can just see something through the side here. Some sharp spines here, and I know what this is. I can. <laughs> there's one plant from this delivery that I think I can uh, recognise with a reasonable degree of surety already, because this is a. The black spined version of a of a pear which I always associate in my mind. There's the slightly lighter one which tends to have white or very pale grey or very pale green uh, terminal spines to the leaves. And that's Agave Victoria Regini. But this is the plant which for many many years was known as King Ferdinand's Agave. Agave Ferdinande Regis. What a fantastic name. King Ferdinand's agave and that of course is uh, King Ferdinand of Spain but then somebody realized that the plant was actually actually named incorrectly so it was given a later name by another botanist but because they actually did the write-up in the scientific papers correctly then the other name has to hold precedence so this is now known as agave nichelsii nichelsii it's an absolutely amazing plant. If I, if, I could, if I was any good at editing and I could edit a picture of a, of a mature plant into this to show you what it will look like. But I'm distracted because around the pot, and you can see the, the circular growth shape there, around the pot has come this wonderful offset. So how long is that there? Nine, ten inches long? So in the wild, this sucker would have grown right away from the plant about 10 inches so you'll be starting up a colony but with a space between each one very Sansevieria like habit of growth a wonderful wonderful agave for my uh, quickly growing agave collection agave nichelsii which used to be known as agave ferdinandi regis and those spines those black spines on the end of the leaves are razor razor sharp okay put my agave down there I'm knocking polystyrene out of the way, so the uh, the delivery is is very very well packed and protected. You can see 
completely filled with polystyrene tubes and then the plants are very very well packed and packaged inside. So I'm reaching down into the, uh, into the mother load now which with cacti is possibly not the cleverest thing to do. Now look at this, this is a whopper. This is a whopper. Now I've got spiked a couple of times already so I've got some clues as to what might be coming out here. Unwrap, 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 ouch, 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 and of course the most important thing is not to damage the spines in my haste and my unwarranted and unaccustomed zeal at getting to see what's in there. And what is in there is, can you see? is a lovely, lovely grass green furrocactus, which may very well be furrocactus potsii. But as I say, the uh, with plants which look similar, and uh, there are a lot of <laughs> a lot of furrocacti in the furrocacti uh, genus, and I've ordered a lot of furrocacti off Benjamin. So exactly what this species is, I don't know. But what I do know is it's a beautiful, beautiful very strongly spined, which is what the attraction for me is, furrow cactus. Now that is, uh, how big is that? About an, a, an apple and a half. An apple and a half in size. Amazingly strong, rigidly strong spines. And of course there is a way of holding uh, furrow cacti and echina cacti. And that's to miss out the central spines. And very, very well developed roots. They can have quite weak root systems. I talked about this before on the videos, furrocacti. And some of the YouTube videos uh, show furrocacti planted in very large pots, which is a, a recipe for disaster as far as I'm concerned. And you can see from the contours of this root ball that this large plant has been growing in, a, in quite a small pot. And that's because we need these plant balls, these root balls, to dry out quickly. But just look at that. That is an absolute gem, a fortress of well-developed spination. There's no predator going to easily get through that unless they're insect size and they can get through the spines. But there's no goats or donkeys going to be munching on that one. What an absolute corker that is. Beautiful, beautiful genus Ferrocactus. And that's uh, going to have pride of place in my collection. It really is. Put that one down. And then that flower, it was actually in the box like this, so that I could, uh, I could identify that there was a flower, but the plant, to avoid breaking the flower stalk, was planted, it was planted, was placed at the very bottom. And this is another uh, Kelly Griffin hybrid, which I'll identify a little bit later, but related to that whole um, pink blush, uh, Christmas Carol, Christmas Sleigh, grouping. And uh, as ever with Benjamin's deliveries, you always get slightly more than you expect. Now I don't want to sound as if I'm, uh, as if I'm praising the guy too much, but a lot of suppliers would be cutting these pups off and selling them for uh, 50 pence or a pound each. But with knobs and blobs, what will happen is if the, if the plant is growing in a pot and it has offsets, you'll get the plant with the offsets. So you nearly always, with aloes and hawarthias, I mean, there's the, uh, the gasteria that came earlier. We talked about that one. And there's the hawarthia clump, which could easily have been divided into individual plants. With Benjamin, you get the lot. So there's the uh, Kelly Griffin hybrid. And there's one two, three, four offsets coming off that plant. It's tremendous. A very, very honest guy and plants of, uh, of really unimpeachable quality.
and that one was catching a few um, polystyrene cubes as it came up so again I wonder what this could possibly be ah and this is another addition to a genius I didn't really like until about uh, a few months ago and this is this is yeah, this this <laughs> Having uh, having been excited about the uh, Furocactus and having been excited about the Agave uh, Ferdinandi Regis, which is now known as Nicelsii, just look at that. Just look at that. That, although it may not look like it from here, is a Gasteria. And this strongly growing, thick-leaved, beautifully white-margined plant is Gasteria nigricans. And not only is it Gasteria nigricans, it's a double-headed Gasteria nigricans. And not only is it a double-headed Gasteria nigricans, it's a double-headed Gasteria nigricans with offsets. Again, just imagine that in a pot, growing happily for a couple of years, making a real mega clump of thick, really, really dark green, hence the name, really, really dark green, uh, succulent leaves. Gorgeous, gorgeous plant. Gasteria nigricans, the dark skinned Gasteria. Right, trying to uh, make some kind of an assemblage here and probably failing badly. Anything else in today's haul which has far surpassed the level of a haul and evolved into a mega haul? That was my uh, best attempt at an American hyperbole there. I'll try and restrain my enthusiasm. And this next delivery is... Well, this is... A very rare and very unusual former of my... Second or third famous, uh, famous favourite genus. You probably think it was my favourite when you see how many I buy. Of uh, an Astrophytum. Now this is a, a hybrid Astrophytum between Myriostigma and Ornatum. And what's significant about that is it's an almost mathematical halfway house between the two. So it has... Eight ribs, like Astrophytum ornatum normally does, but it's got the overall physiognomy and uh, smoothness of Astrophytum myriostigma fanudum, the former which has got no scales on it, and it has little, little tiny short spines coming out of the areoles there. And you can see it's got some of that um, Japanese uh, hybrid hybridization program marks there and some of the astrophytums have a lot of those like the um, variety for Kuryu. So this is a, possibly a astrophytum myriostigma fanudum, uh, the for version from the Japanese nurseries crossed with astrophytum ornatum. Very unusual, very rare, very choice plant. All right, place that one down. Any more? Something's just gone right at the cuticle of my nail, so almost certainly there is anything more. And this one is taking quite a bit of um, ginger handling, so I'm handling this quite gingerly because this is penetrating the outer layers of my epidermis with remarkable ease. Now these spines, although this is still well padded are very, uh, very sharp. And this is not a plant you would like to uh, land on should you jump out of a parachute, jump out of a parachute, jump out of an aeroplane without a parachute. And this is uh, almost certainly the most heavily spined uh, Gymnocalycium I've seen. It looks a little bit like um, our Martum, but uh, I couldn't put money on that. All I know is it is very sharp. I mean, I could put money in that because I know it isn't Armatum because I know what Armatum looks like. And the only reason I know it's a Gymno 
Is it because it has that incredibly uh, geometrical shape that all gymnocalisiums have? And each tubercle at the underneath of it has like a little chin, which is one of the most identifiable features. And even another little offset coming there. So when I've identified of all these plants with 100% accuracy, because I don't want to make a total chump of myself by guessing at names, I know it's a gymnocalisium. And what I'll do is I'll photograph this and put it on the uh, Kirkstone Botanica Facebook page and also on Instagram uh, on Kirkstone Botanica 2007 with a positive ID. Gorgeous, gorgeous plant. Again, about as big as what? An apple. And I'll add that to the, the groaning shelf of the mega hall from Knobs and Blobs 2. And I'm still digging, but well, this is a much longer plant, and for some reason Benjamin has decided to seal this one up. Now that's either because it's a real treasure, and he doesn't want just anybody looking at it, or it could be because he just simply doesn't want it to unwrap during the postage process. I don't think that was the most efficient bit of unwrapping I've ever done. And I'm going to have a hell of a mess to clear up. So I'm just chucking everything on the floor. But this is... Now I'm going to guess the genus before I've even opened it. Because the spines are detaching themselves and embedding themselves in my finger. So I'm going to guess this is something that wasn't ordered. This is something that... My friend Benjamin has sent me as a reward for being such a loyal and steadfast pal. I'll have to ask him what that is because I've got no idea. It looks like a Sirius of some kind. It's a great plant. I don't know what it is. I'm not even going to guess. Apart from the fact that it's a cactus and it's a Sirius. But it is a free gift from Benjamin. So... Something to bear in mind, if you have a largish order, you might just slip something in that you weren't expecting. As the bishop said to the actress. Is there any more? Good Lord in heaven, there is. I had to dig down deep. I had to dig down deep indeed. I think I might have struck the mother load with um, Gasteria nigricans. I actually can't take my eyes off that plant while I'm looking at the others. So what do we have here? Oh, we have uh, what looks like an unidentified Gasterallo. I can sense the genes jumping out at me. And that is definitely a Gasterallo. I'm not 100% certain which one, but uh, it's another, what's that, 5 inches, magnificent plant. And again, I will draw attention to the fact that we have 1, 2, 3, 3.1, three, uh, 3 4, 5 offsets. So this is very soon going to make quite a notable clump. That's a gasterallo, which is going to go down there. And I think someone's putting plants at the bottom of this box. It's like a, a bad magician's trick. I've got a hollow box and an assistant uh, cunningly hidden underneath the potting desk, pushing more plants up into this box because there's no way... And look at that. Look at what a, what a note to end on. Look at that. Lovely, lovely clump of uh, some dwarf dwarf dwarfia there. Again, I can't uh, identify that with 100% certainty. I know what it looks like, but I don't want to be wrong. And there's maybe brrr, 35, 37 individual little heads there. Looks uh, a bit like a uh, Warthia Asperula, perhaps. 
You can just see those uh, palish green tubercles, those windows at the end of the leaves that the light is shining through. Fabulous, 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 fabulous little clump. So how many uh, clumps of the old Liliaceae have we got? We've got that Hawarthia. We've got that Ingasteria. We've got that Ingasteria nigricans. We've got that Ingasterallo, which is rapidly becoming a clump by popping left, right and centre. And we had that. Hawarthia retusa variety or hybrid. Clump, 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 clump. And are we finished? Yes, we are. I think we are. I'm just making absolutely certain. I'm discarding pieces of paper. And that is confirmed. And the weight would confirm that as well. So that was a big box. And to be honest, I'm not quite sure how Benjamin got all those plants in there. But let's have a, a flying overview very carefully what we've got here. Because we've already done quite a long video and I know everybody's very busy. So we have that uh, fabulous, fabulous, fabulous Gasterallo there. We have that, um, I'll just give you a proper view of the Gasterallo. There we are, lovely plant with all those offsets. And then we have that uh, agave. I'm really, really into agaves right now. I did say uh, about five videos ago that I, I've managed to avoid agaves for all my life. And I had a, a subconscious reason for that because I knew once I got involved with agaves, it would become an obsession. And, and, it, and it has. It has. I'm really, really into those uh, the myriad forms and uh, variations of a rosette that they can produce and of course the odd little uh, offset is always a boon and a pleasure then we've got one of the first uh, Hawarthia clumps there growing up nicely there that Gymno Coliseum then we've got that other Gasteria the small form of a Gasterio um, bicolor whichever one it is then that fabulous 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 Gasteria nigricans are just Oh, I am just in love with that plant. Look at those three and a half inch long finger thick leaves and more leaves coming on the way. That's, that, uh, that, that would be the plant that I will not be able to restrain myself from potting up first. I really want to see what that looks like in a pot. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Then we have that aloe hybrid, whatever it is, with the, uh, the long uh, flower stalk. that looks a little bit like um, pink blush, but isn't pink blush. I don't think. All I know is it with any surety is it's definitely a Kelly Griffin hybrid. Then we've got that super spiny uh, Gymno Coliseum. The one that is quite happily puncturing my uh, my hand as we speak. Lovely, lovely uh, sim symmetry the Gymno Coliseum genus normally exhibits. One of the things which attracts me to it. Then we had that uh, spicy uh, furrow cactus. Is it uh, Peninsularis? Is it, well, what is it? What could it possibly be? It's a very, very spiky uh, ferrocactus. It has a little bit of a look of um, Gracilis coloratus about it in terms of shape and the, the rib structure. But I know it isn't Gracilis coloratus because it doesn't have those uh, searingly red, ruby red spines. So I need to check that one up. It may be Potsii. Then we have that Hawarthia fasciata. Lovely, 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 lovely plant. Those incredibly iridescent white uh, cubicles. But this one is destined to be sent to a, to a friend who I, I've ordered it for. And then the, finally that uh, uh, mega clump of the Hawarthia Retusa hybrid. I mean, just look at that. Just imagine that in a pot surrounded with its uh, artistic uh, surroundings of uh, chunky grit. And you've got an absolute winner. And finally that super unusual blow some of the dust off so we can appreciate it. That really dark green uh, Astrophyta Myriostigma Ornatum um, hybrid which has got the, the traces between the ribs of the, the marks that you see on uh, Astrophytum for curry.